Hello, this is uh, Horatio Dancia. I'm a hand surgeon with Cardiac Clinic Orthopedics, uh, Virginia Tech School of Medicine in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, I will be talking today about uh, hand infections, bringing a few points uh, relevant uh, for learners. Um, I will be talking about the most frequent infections like cellulitis, uh, paronychia and eponychia, felon, um, viral infections like herpetic whitlow, and of course, flexorotinosynovitis, which is a common infection of the tendon sheath, uh, as well as deep space infections. Um, I will not be touching much about septic arthritis, osteomyelitis, a few touches about fight bites and uh, atypical hand infections. Uh, and I will be finishing my lecture with a uh, couple of misnomers uh, regarding infections. First, I would uh, start about paronychia, which is the most common infection in the hand. It's uh, most uh, commonly treated by primary care physicians. Only uh, refractory cases will be uh, sent to see a hand surgeon. An acute paronychia, it's uh, essentially infection of the soft tissue fold around the fingernail. Um, the bacterial inoculation usually happens uh, through a small injury, through manicure instrument or nail bitting which uh, uh, is causing a disruption of the barrier between the nail fold and the nail plate. Uh, the most common agent involved is uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, it's important to know anatomy of the nail uh, complex, um, which includes the nail bed, the nail plate, and the perionicum. The nail bed is uh, composed of the general matrix and sterile matrix. Um, and we have to know that the proximal portion of the nail plate sits below the nail fold, as you see in the uh, image below. The perionicum is the border tissue surrounding the nail on uh, three sides. Um, eponychium is a thin layer of soft tissue uh, extending from the nail wall onto the nail plate. Hyponychium, uh, it's the mass of the keratin distal to the sterile matrix, essentially right up over the fingertip. Uh, below the distal nail plate. And this uh, uh, hyponychium is extremely resistant to infection, would not allow bacteria to cross through, uh, through it. Um, clinical presentation of paronychia is erythema, swelling, and tenderness adjacent to the nail. Uh, if left untreated, uh, it may uh, form an abscess along the nail fold. Uh, occasionally may extend below the nail plate, creating what called horseshoe abscess or into the finger pulp. Infection of the entire eponychium, as well as one lateral fold, and that's the most uh, common uh, uh, form, most uh, common uh, clinically encountered uh, form, it's uh, known as eponychia, which is a collection of pus beneath the proximal portion of the nail in the region, region of the lunula, it's rare to see uh, both lateral folds. Uh, usually it's the it's proximal on one side. Here you see a clinical picture um, with a pus uh, that can go beneath the eponychial fold, occasionally may extend uh, under the nail plate to form a horseshoe abscess. As you see in the image uh, presented, this is affects only one side of the nail. Uh, imaging labs are not necessary. Pa and general patients not responding to initial treatment uh, or patients with significant swelling uh, or development of abscess should be evaluated for uh, other systemic diseases like diabetes, which would uh, uh, slightly worsen the prognosis. If no response to empiric therapy with a first generation cephalosporin, we should consider uh, community acquired uh, MRSA. Uh, this would create more uh, local tissue necrosis and sometimes less uh, pus formation um, with increased uh, prevalence on community acquired MRSA uh, over the past decade. Uh, initial empiric uh, antibiotic therapy recommendations are changing at this point. Treatment options in early stages, uh, soaks in uh, warm solution, uh, as I mentioned earlier, systemic oral antibiotics, and the rest of the affected finger. Um, in case of a superficial abscess, opening the thin layer of tissue over the abscess with a sharp blade directed away from the nail bed and matrix would allow drainage of the 
abscess and uh, resolution of the symptoms. Uh, and also counseling uh, regarding high risk uh, activities as, uh, such as nail biting or a recommendation to use uh, clean instruments for manicure. Here it's uh, um, um, cartoon depicting a, a way to treat this surgically. If we suspect that this is uh, going under the nail plate, uh, lifting that uh, specific part of the nail plate is beneficial to allow complete range of the abscess. Uh, and in cartoon B, uh, you can see an incision over the abscess with the blade directed away from the nail bed and its matrix. Postoperatively, patients can be uh, sent home on oral antibiotics for seven to 10 days. Uh, they should start daily soaks uh, in uh, either hibiclin mixed with water or uh, just uh, water uh, mixed with soap, clean water, early motion to prevent stiffness. Improvement is expected within a few days, but some soreness may persist for a few months and patients should be consulted that uh, occasionally nail deformity can occur. Misdiagnosis of a paronychia. Uh, it's uh, uh, occasionally common, uh, can be made with the uh, infection, uh, viral infection, uh, uh, the herpetic Whitlow. This is that herpetic Whitlow is contraindicated and can result in uh, systemic viral infection, bacterial superinfection, or uh, both. And I will have a few slides uh, about the herpetic Whitlow. Now, changing gears, cellulitis of the hand, it's uh, infection of the skin and adjacent uh, subcutaneous tissue consists of erythema, edema, and pain of the localized area. And uh, deeper structures are not involved. Uh, in patients would have a full painless range of motion of all digits, hand and wrist, and no tenderness on palpation over the deeper structures. Uh, most common uh, agent here is uh, Streptococcus pyogenes, uh, but occasionally staph aureus have been uh, shown to cause cellulitis. Uh, treatment is uh, immobilize uh, the affected part, elevate uh, oral antibiotics, and uh, after initial uh, uh, observation, patient can be discharged home unless uh, the patient is immunocompromised, systemically ill, or the cellulitis appears to be spreading. That's why at presentation, it's important to uh, mark the area of erythema and follow over the next 12 to 24 hours to confirm improvement. Uh, that to say, it's we want to see decrease in size of the erythema. Now, as uh, mentioned earlier, herpetic Whitlow, it's the most common uh, viral infection of the hand, although it's still relatively rare. Uh, it's important to distinguish, distinguish this from uh, uh, eponychia. It more, uh, it's caused by direct inoculation through broken skin, and it's more common in uh, younger uh, uh, people, uh, kids with herpetic gingival stomatitis. In adults, it's most commonly uh, herpes simplex viral uh, 2. Uh, it's also more common in healthcare workers that have contact with uh, such infections. Uh, in general, it affects a single finger. Uh, symptoms are pain, uh, pruritus, and the swelling. Uh, in time, they uh, the patient will develop vesicles that coalesce over the first uh, one to two weeks, uh, resulting uh, then in ulcer formation with a hemorrhagic base. Uh, it may look like a felon, but again, drainage uh, of a herpetic uh, Whitlow uh, lesion is contraindicated. Uh, this is how it may look on the dorsal aspect of the finger, again, over the eponychial fold, easy to be uh, confounded uh, with eponychia. Um, that's how it looks on the lateral aspect of the finger, where already um, we have a hemorrhagic base of the vesicle. And uh, this again on the side of the finger uh, where it may be uh, confounded with an abscess. We have to take a careful history. Uh, we have to note that uh, on clinical exam, the pulp is uh, soft. It's uh, not, the infection is not extending there. 
the distal finger is tender. It, this is essentially a clinical diagnosis. The herpetic Whitlow resolves spontaneously within a few weeks. Uh, we have to uh, counsel the patient to prevent oral inoculation by covering the hand lesion with a dry dressing. In patients that, are, uh, that have immunoco they're immunocompromised or have frequent infections, uh, oral uh, viral, uh, viral treatment with acyclovir, uh, it's uh, recommended. Coming back to bacterial infections, uh, felon, it's a subcutaneous abscess of the distal pulp of the finger or thumb. Um, superficial infections of the most distal part of the pulp are called apical infections. Most common organism is uh, staph aureus. Rare uh, other bacteria like gram negatives in immunocompromised patients or uh, diabetics. Again, coming back to anatomy, um, this is uh, shows the collection of pus within uh, the finger pulp um, in the soft tissue. Clinical presentation, it's one of the probably the second most common infection of the hand, representing up to 20% of all uh, hand infections. Uh, patient present with uh, throbbing pain, tension over the tip, and swelling of the entire distal uh, pulp. Swelling does not extend proximal to the DIP flexion crease, and this is an important uh, clinical feature. In general, there's a history of penetrating injury um, that uh, most patients do, uh, do recall. Um, common presentation in diabetics, the finger stick felons in diabetic patients who repeatedly uh, traumatize the fingertips for blood tests. Obviously, by doing that, they break the, the skin and break the, the barrier for bacteria. Treatment in the early phase, uh, when there's only cellulitis, elevation, oral antibiotics and soaks are appropriate, but this should be followed. Uh, if a uh, patient develops uh, fluctuants within the pulp, uh, surgical drainage is indicated. Approach should be such to avoid injury to the digital nerve and vessels, and uh, to avoid leaving a disabling scar and also to not violate a flexor tendon sheath. Like any abscess drainage, any such incision should provide adequate drainage. And this is uh, probably the most common way to um, drain a felon through a lateral incision that would uh, respect all the previous criteria and allow good drainage. Such uh, an incision would be left open and uh, potentially packed to, to keep it open and allow further drainage. Other incisions, uh, they could be on the lateral aspect of the finger extending over the tip, could be a transverse incision uh, on the palmar aspect of the finger or longitudinal incision, depending on the point of maximum fluctuance. Changing gears again, flexor tenosynovitis, it is considered a surgical emergency. We have to act quickly to preserve function of the digital hand. Uh, usually involves a flexor tenon sheath and a radial ulnar bars uh, uh, along the finger. In uh, infection spreads along the course of the flexor, flexor tenon sheet into the palm, may spread into the mid palm, martina or lumbrical compartments. Here we have to uh, remember that the tenon sheet to the small finger and the thumb do uh, connect with the space of parona into the mid palm, and such a flexor tenosynovitis to the small finger and thumb may quickly spread to the mid palm while the flexor tenon sheet uh, to the index middle and the uh, ring finger uh, stops uh, essentially uh, at the base of the finger. Such, injury, uh, such infections are usually caused by penetrating uh, trauma. Most patients will remember an, uh, an injury within the past uh, few days to a week. Most common organism um, is staph aureus but other bacteria can be involved, like streptococcus, anaerobes, or gram-negatives. In case of animal bites, uh, pasteurella is uh, commonly present. And also, we should uh, consider uh, gonococcus if there's no trauma in a sexually active young patient. Uh, clinical fixtures, uh, the uh, classic for carnival signs, uh, tenderness along the course of the flexor tendon, symmetric swelling of the finger, pain on passive extension, flex uh, posture of the finger, 
Um, again, we don't need to have all four of them, but uh, the more of those signs we have, the most uh, more significant the infection should be considered. Now, uh, treatment uh, over the past uh, decade uh, has been accepted that uh, in early uh, presentation, uh, very close follow-up while patient is treated with IV antibiotics uh, appropriate for the type of uh, infection is uh, accepted for 12 to 24 hours. If there is improvement, patient may continue oral antibiotics. If there's no improvement on any worsening, uh, incision drainage, surgical drainage of the flexor tendon sheet is recommended. Um, um, the antibiotic used could be uh, ampicillin and solbactam or cefazolin and uh, penicillin. In IV drug uh, users, we should be uh, considering vancomycin or if there's a concern for uh, disseminated gonococcal infection, ceftriaxone would be the appropriate uh, choice as antibiotic. Uh, there are multiple ways to drain uh, the flexor tendon sheath. Uh, uh, the goal is to uh, access the flexor tendon sheath proximal and distally and be able to irrigate uh, between those incisions. In case of very severe, uh, uh, infection, whereas we, we suspect uh, tissue necrosis, a wide approach like in cartoon A it would be indicated. Um, if it's relatively early, it's okay to uh, proceed with the proximal incision over the A1 poly and a distal incision at the uh, DIP flexion crease uh, through which uh, we can uh, either place a, uh, a pediatric feeding tube or an angiocat to irrigate the entire flexor tendon sheet until the irrigant uh, returns uh, clear. Now, uh, again, changing gears to deep fascial space infections. Um, this is, uh, the palm is relatively fixed uh, structure. So often the infection will be shown on the dorsum of the hand. Um, that's why we should be, be aware of the dorsal hand cellulitis as this actually may represent um, a sign of a deep space infection in the palm. There are four potential spaces where we may encounter a deep abscess or a deep space infection. It's a dorsal aponeurotic space. It's a subfascial web space, essentially between the fingers, the tenar space, uh, deep, to the ten the, deep to the tenar, tenar muscles and mid palmar space. Uh, here you have uh, a few cartoons showing those abscesses, types of abscesses. Uh, clinical presentation, uh, in general, we see swelling of the entire hand, and that's important, uh, both palmar and dorsally, but it's uh, more seen on a dorsal aspect of the hand. The tight fascia on a palmar surface would limit the amount of swelling in the palm. Um, there are areas of palmar swelling and exquisite tenderness localized of the involved uh, palmar space. And it's good to know that hypotenar infections generally have less dorsal swelling as there's more uh, room to expand uh, um, in the hypotenar space. Infections in general uh, are a result of a direct uh, penetrating trauma that could be contiguous spread from adjacent infection or uh, more rarely hematogenous spread. Most common bacteria uh, could be streptococcus, uh, staphylococcus, E. coli or anaerobes. Treatment, those are surgical em uh, emergencies. Patients should be started immediately on intravenous antibiotics with good staphylococcal coverage, uh, but surgery is the mainstay of treatment. Uh, incision drainage of the abscess should be uh, done uh, immediately. Um, again, uh, changing gears to septic arthritis essentially can affect any joint in our body, any joint in our hand. Most common is direct inoculation from penetrating trauma that could be continuous, uh, continuous spread from adjacent infection. Uh, stuff, uh, Oreos is by far the most common uh, causing bacteria in uh, non-traumatic. Uh, if patients do not recall any injury, we should think about gonococcus. The joint is red, swollen, tender, and uh, pain is localized. So all those symptoms are localized to one joint and occasionally we may see a puncture wound overlying the respective joint. The uh, respective joint is held in the posi in a position to maximize the joint volume. Uh, 
we would not uh, clinical presentation would note uh, very painful passive flexion and also extremely painful axial load um, the most accurate diagnosis is done by arthrocentesis uh, treatment uh, antibiotics to cover staphylococcus as this is the most common uh, causing bacteria but surgical drainage uh, is uh, indicated uh, for septic arthritis in general as being the uh, most uh, basically the only treatment to uh, to cure that fight bites it is a form of septic arthritis but there are also uh, other structures that are injured uh, the combination of having a sharp incisor that could cause uh, a, uh, a deep injury uh, very abundant uh, oral flora and also many tissue layers that are injured through such an injury uh, create a basis of a rapidly spreading infection. On physical exam, we see a puncture wound uh, over the dorsum, uh, dorsal aspect of the hand, over the MP joint, uh, area of cellulitis surrounding that wound, and occasionally the extensor tendon may be visible uh, within a wound. Plain films here are indicated as uh, occasionally we may see uh, associate fractures, uh, either of most commonly of the uh, head of the metacarpal, uh, but also may see a fra tooth fragment within the wound. Treatment is antibiotics to cover a wide spectrum of, of uh, bacteria, including Achenella. Uh, Ampicillin with Solbactam is usually the first choice. Um, it is a, this is a surgical emergency. Uh, the wound should be uh, cleaned and irrigated thoroughly, should be left open, and the respective uh, hands should be mobilized to allow for healing. In general, he, uh, improvement happens within a few days. Um, and I uh, close my talk uh, with uh, two misnomers uh, that have uh, the, the word PO pass basically in their name, which are actually not infections. And one is pyoderma gangrenosum, which is an uncommon ulcerative uh, cutaneous condition of still unknown etiology. Uh, frequently, it's associated with systemic diseases, uh, and it's a frequent. Uh, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, it's important to know again: this is not an infection; should not be treated with antibiotics. Patients uh, with pyoderma gangrenosum may have involvement in other organ systems. Again, could be a systemic disease. Uh, in cases where attempt to get a culture, uh, they're going to be negative. Again, we have culture negative pulmonary infiltrates as well as the most common extracutaneous manifestation. Pyoderma gangrenosum ulcers can develop quickly, but they usually clear up with treatment. But scarring and recurrences are common. And that's how it looks. Uh, you see it as a necrotic injury initially uh, that develops as an ulcer. Uh, they are more common on legs than on the hands, but it can appear, appear anywhere on the body. Uh, the second misnomer, it's pyogenic granuloma. Again, this is not an infection. It is a benign vascular tumor occurring in all ages. Uh, it consists of capillary prolifer uh, proliferations, venules, and fibromyxoid stroma. And bleeding is a common symptom, uh, can mimic other vascular lesions, uh, has been shown that could be drug-induced as well from targeted tumor therapies. Uh, surgical treatment involves uh, excision, cauterization, or uh, even laser therapy. Uh, some topical treatments uh, could be of uh, help. And that's how this looks. Uh, this concludes my lecture about hand infections and a couple of misnomers. Thank you for your attention.